Hello, this is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Thank you for joining me today on some sketching outside, finally, in some gorgeous weather. So, you know, before we get started, please do hit the like and subscribe button, as ever, much appreciated. And then let's enjoy finding a lovely view. So I've been eyeing up this spot behind me for a while now. See those gorgeous houses, those lovely shapes, and just wanting to capture it in some good light. So here we are today, and we will find something comfy and get sketching. We'll have a little chat, of course, about the uh, different challenges you have sketching outside compared to inside, because uh, these challenges are very real. So challenge number one is finding a good viewpoint. For me that's a, a lovely frame that you can see just now. I'd like to be a little bit further over so more of an angle so I could see more of the side of the house but challenge number one is there's always a fence in the way. But just spend a little bit of time walking around and finding the best frame that you can for whatever scene it is you'd like to sketch. Now the next challenge is you see that on camera framed quite nicely well it's not anymore but it was there you go framed quite nicely but what i see is you know 200 and something degrees of vision so you actually have to have a very careful understanding of what it is that you're, you're trying to sketch what you're trying to capture so i'm just going to get set up and i'll show you how i managed to achieve that well try and achieve that and here is my um, my setup. So I've got a little collapsible uh, water cup, which has also got a couple of holes I can put brushes in if I need to. I've got this flat water bottle that holds 500 mils, which is enough to fill this thing up two or three times. I've obviously got a, a, a sketchbook. There's A5 moleskin with um, slightly textured paper. I've got my normal palette, which you'll recognise from other videos. I normally carry a sponge with me rather than paper because a sponge can be used over and over again. Then I've got a range of pens, so three different pens. My Skoda Versatile size 8, I believe, size 10, sorry. And then I've got two different water brushes. And that is it, that is all I need to have a nice day outside sketching. Okay, so we were talking about how there's some um, unique challenges to being outside and one of those is the framing and how do you take the entire of your field of vision and translate it into being on a page well the way i get around that is by doing some thumbnail sketches so i've just popped a couple of squares on and now what we can do is just quickly just have a look at how much of our scene might actually fit in our house in our house in our in our um, frame i said house because i'm sketching a house one track mine clearly so if we just have a look here we've got the, the two chimneys we've got this edge coming down with some nice shadow and we can use our thumbnail sketches to just work out the tones and values in the scene as well door which is kind of covered by there's a railing coming across and then this house, that's much shorter than that. See, there you go. This is the perfect time to make those mistakes. And it comes across. And you can see, in this framing, I'm not going to fit everything in I want. So that's fine. Mistake one made. Um, just going to keep working away to the side of the image and see what would have fitted so that I can get an idea for later. So we kind of... We're almost there, but I want more more space. So let's try again in this using what we've learned. So maybe I'll start at the left and that will get, let me just work towards the right and work out how much I can get in. Because I want this leftmost house in. So get that shape. And this little wall coming down behind it. Then we've got this sort of wooden house really fascinating that's in the middle of the town the big window then we move on to our next house with 
this big chimney. Okay, and then just looking, we've got some greenery here. And we've got these little roofs and another framing house. And then in the front, we've got a uh, the edge of a river, edge of a canal. And that kind of slopes all the way around and it gives us a really lovely frame at the bottom. And we've got this little, um, not sure what they're called, <laughs> little pillars. Okay, and again, let's just work out where these shadows are. There's some shadows on here. There's shadows in behind here, shadows under there, and under here, and on there. Okay, so we've got a much better frame here now. Now what I'm going to do is just recognise that both times I had to work outside of my square. So I've got two choices really. I can do this image as I've sketched it. I can turn the page landscape. Or I can use this image as I've sketched it, put it down and really open up that sky. And I think uh, for my purposes today, I'll most enjoy getting a really big, vibrant sky. The sky is so blue and lovely that I think that's the way forward. So let's get started using this as our rough guide. We've understood the ba basic proportions, the, the tones, values in the scene. And we've sort of decided how low we're going to go. I say that, just looking, it might be nice just to get the idea of a wall in. So we'll add this little wall line in as well. And let's just, with that idea, get cracking. So I'm going to do this nice and loose in my sort of one line style to start with. And we'll see how far we get with that. Just starting again, so starting on the left of the image was more successful for me. Um, so I'll do that again, and then if you look at the, the reference, which is in the corner, which is what I'm looking at in real life, it's got that lovely textured roof. So if we just bring that in, and this is can be the mark of where our metalwork from the river comes in. And then we'll just keep working around these buildings with that reference point in. And again, this wooden building is so interesting. So just make sure you capture those textures. And we get to here. And again this roof. And this is all about comparative measuring now. So how do I know where this roof ends? Well I can see it's slightly lower than this roof. So I stop it there, come across. And then something I often talk about is using your pen to measure. So in in this scene, and maybe I'll, I'll do a little outtake to show you, but you can pop your arm out straight and then hold your pen against something, see where the angle of it is, bring it down, as long as you keep your pen and arm in the same orientation as your point of view, you can work out the exact angle of this. things so pretend this is a one line style now there is a car there but this is another th important thing i'm the only one here right so apart from the fact that i've taken a photo to show you no one knows there's a car there so let's just get rid of it it doesn't fit the idea of what i want today so you can just edit your image it's fine no one will know okay and then fitting with the vibe of wonky and characterful just don't worry about your lines being too neat. And then bring this guy down at the back. And again, the perspective is a little odd. So just sense checking, is this low enough yet? No, actually it has to come lower than this roof before the wall comes in. So it's a remarkable perspective. And then you can also just check this angle between this corner and this corner. And yeah, that's right. So we're there almost. And then I've forgotten to pop in this chimney. But as with all things sketching, it just doesn't matter. Add it in next. Now let's come back across here and start to just capture these fun 
chimneys as they join us, making sure that we keep an eye on the perspective. I'm really hoping this original audio works because it's quite fun being surrounded by church bells and birds. And well, I had to pause my recording for a while because a recycling van came. Um, but all these noises and things are just an added boner, certainly to me, over just me talking to myself. But um, it's one of the many reasons why just sketching outside is so rewarding. Even if it's challenging, it's certainly rewarding. Okay, now we come down. So I'm still just keeping this idea of wonky characterful sketch marks. And you can see, despite my um, thumbnail sketch, I've managed to uh, come inside what I was aiming for. But, you know, that's all right. What I'm going to do, I'm in a sketchbook and we're outside and things go wrong. I'm just going to extend onto the other page and onto some of these sketches. It's fine. I'm just trying to enjoy myself, really. So we can just get that little roof, which is what I wanted to get in. And we can, if we just make this nice and bold, we can tell it's part of what we're drawing, part of our day, not part of this sketch. And you know what's quite nice about this as well? Well, this is capturing the whole day now. It's, this, it's the scene and the preparation and the ruggedness and the challenges you have from sketching outside. Now let's start to sort of contextualise this scene and what I mean by that is just bring in the the river, the element of the river, which is this wall. And just to make it a certain boundary, I'm just pressing fairly hard with my pen and giving it some of these brick textures as well as we go. And because humans naturally have a sort of um, not bird's eye, but um, fish eye vision, and this river's on a bend. Just make sure I'm capturing that curve to really give the impression of being in the scene, rather than a, a flat photo, which often loses that element of sort of wonky perspective, which we actually, our lived experience as humans is to have a little bit of a wonky perspective. We just ignore it because our brains are very good at converting it into a, a flat image so that we can understand. So we've got this in, I'm just starting to pop in a couple of little details and let's just get the idea of this road. There's another little road coming down here. So we just get some loose sketch marks in there. And there's nothing else, there's a little bit of texture on this building here. And then this is a sort of door wood and then a funny line of texture. This is all I'm looking for, I'm not you know sketching the exact things. I'm I'm picking out textures and elements and you know join these windows up to the window I'm joining to the roof you can see. And it just makes things simple and understandable. So I've missed out the little background roof here. And just to get that in without confusing the eye, keep that pen mark really loose and light. Then there's another gate here. So let's make this gate the same as the other one. And then here we're onto these lovely windows. And these windows is where you'll start to get the scope, the scale of what we're looking at. It makes these make sense suddenly. This is a, a small house, but this is a really big house. We've got a door. We've got another window here. And again, just sticking with my normal principle of joining everything together. Joining things together lets you make mistakes, lets you uh, add character, lets, lets you simplify everything. And especially if you're sketching outside, it's a great, great way of just taking the brakes off and just just going for it and not being afraid. And these buildings are covered in textures of bricks and everything going on. So it's not like these lines can't correspond to that texture. 
I think maybe if this was a really modern block of flats, these lines would would have to be changed, they'd have to be replaced with it, some different idea. But it's not, so they don't. They make sort of perfect sense in the context of a rickety, quite big, as we keep saying, house. Now I'm going to get the, the river in a little bit. I think that would be a nice touch, which we just decided at the end, if you remember in this in this sketch, was um, something just to bring a little bit of meaning to where we are. Oh, that made me jump. That was a couple of ducks just landing. So this is the bottom of the uh, wall, and this is just some marks in the water, which hopefully will translate with a little dab of colour into making this scene really pop out. And these are just some little brick marks. And we're almost done. I don't know what you guys think. I'm just going to add some texture to this roof. And maybe, you know, we can do the same up here. Just continue our little spidery lines, getting the perspective marked in. Maybe we know this is such an interesting texture, this house. These just old wooden panels. Let's get those in as well. It's always good to just step back and have a, a look and a think. Is there anything that I'd like to add in which I've neglected to? Well, there's a nice little wire coming off this house. That'll be fun. And there's a TV aerial up here with just new meets old. For me, is always a wonderful sort of artistic meeting point if you like and then there is a giant tree just here right in front of me which I'm kind of having to sketch around and I, I'm not going to include that but there are some lovely trees coming up here which I think I will and these are sort of wiry tree trunks and if we just get the idea of them coming up to about here and although they're broadly not covered in leaves, we can still use the same structure that I normally use, this sort of dome, joining it up with branching patterns. Because we're not trying to draw exactly what it is, and by using not, not green colours, we'll understand that this isn't a sort of middle of summer or like late spring bushy green tree. This is a end of winter, yet to regain its leaves tree. And believe it or not, this is Britain and it's end of winter and it's rather warm, which is why I'm huddling in the shade. Okay, well that is the, the pen sketch done. So I'm just gonna give you a look at it. So that is the frame and that is the sketch. So what is next? Well, I think we all know that, it's colours. So let's put together my travel brush and get going. So there's nothing clever about the colours. It's very much, you know, we've now got, got our perspective sorted, we've got our framing sorted. You know, we haven't talked about it much, but the focal point is kind of travelling here. And this is obviously, for me, the point of interest. So I'm just going to proceed as I normally do, and that is with Today I think I'm, I'm going to stick with the Escoda brush. It's often, if I haven't got anywhere to put my pot of water, I'll use those um, uh, water brushes. But I do prefer, if I can, to use a sort of proper pot of water. Just, it's a bit more flexible, I think that's the main reason. And I'm just going to prep a nice water channel. so. Obviously we're going to go for a bright blue here, but I want the blue to really be able to spread. So you can see that I need to refill my cobalt. I think I've been saying that for a while now. And just look at this, look at this wonderful spreading. And it will just seep along there now. Now when I sketch outdoors, I think my colours tend to be lighter, on the whole. 
um, often because you're in a bit more of a, a rush or you only planned for sketching outside for a few minutes or the weather's terrible and <laughs> you're freezing. Um, let's see what happens today though because every, everything's different and constantly making changes and doing things a bit differently. As ever I'm just going to introduce some texture to this guy and let these pools move around. I would normally have a clip on my page as well and the only reason I haven't got it is because it's disappeared from my bag. I'm not sure where it's disappeared to because I normally have clips in all my bags. I suspect Tash has used it for something not art related. <laughs> okay well you see how this is just pooling together and running in down here and it's just these really gentle tones are spread out here. We can amp that up a little bit. I'm also going to bring the blue down this bit. Remember we, we've got all the shadows marked out here so we can confidently to start introducing some of that blue which is going to make a nice shadow colour. And then I've got my Lunar Earth here which is a really lovely granulating warm brown if you look at it there. And that I'm going to introduce into these trees. Remember we said don't need to be clever, don't need to um, sketch painstakingly every bit of branch. Instead what we can do is add the right colours and then if we just mix some blues coming in and that will give the impression of the sky and it will also neutralise some of that brown and give the impression of shadow. And maybe we add a bit more brown in places and then we add a bit more blue and we let it just do its thing for a bit. And then this colour, let's keep using it. So brown and a blue will neutralise. So we can keep using these same little mix just to emphasise some of those shadows a bit more and take away their brightness. And do you see how that's just subtly, gradually becoming a neutral colour? We can link it into there now. And we can pop it in these windows. So remember this building in front of me is essentially white. It's certainly the lightest thing in our in our um, landscape by a long way. Let's start playing with some other colours now. So let's get a little bit of red mixed in with that brown and let's introduce that to our wall. You see how this is now going to just frame our our house, this sort of bold negative space. And we can put some of this in here as well. There's a funny splash of red paint on there. Um, wouldn't be right to pop it in this next house. This next house is quite yellow. So let's pop a little bit of yellow on there. The yellow is too bold, but maybe if we introduce some brown. No, I'm not sure about that. And this is what it's about, a little bit of test and try again. So we're going to go moon glow instead. Yeah, and we've got this sort of mucky neutralised, slightly neutralised um, yellow. And let's just pop that on there. And that's a lovely colour, so that's worked really well. Just a subtle bit of yellow. And let's bring that in to our wall, because our wall's got all sorts of colours going on. And to be honest, let's get it just touched in in a couple of places up here. And I think the um, the roof is the next major bit to tackle. And again, I, we're going to stick with this sort of brown theme. And I'm going to take my Van Dyke brown. Because the, the roof is remarkably warm, actually. So even this Van Dyke brown is probably too, um, too flat, uh, too cool, maybe. So let's add some quinacridone there. Yeah, and I think that will do us very nicely. And if I just bring that across, oh, maybe even a bit more Van Dyke, you know. Yeah, that's the kind of effect we're looking for. So this, look at that roof sort of glowing. It's definitely dark, uh, like a, an earthy tone, but it's just glowing wonderfully as well. And let's just make sure we use that. A little bit more water, a little bit looser, just introducing a little bit of red as well into this other roof. 
Yes. Now I'd like just to draw your attention to what's happened to the tree. So this um, lunar earth, do you see how much it granulates and how, because it's granulated and left behind these neutralised pigment areas of light blues, you really do get the impression of a, a see-through tree which has got these rough areas of, of brown coming and going. And what else can we do? So, I think a little bit more of some darker tones could, could start to introduce themselves. So, if I just take that mix I've been using and add some more in Danfro, more Van Dyke, so all in this little corner of my palette, and we can start just emphasise some of these shadowed areas. And remember, windows can either be dark or they can reflect the sky really simplified way of doing windows. In this case the original shade I used has some of the sky colour in and now I'm just coming back and adding some more darker emphasis. And let's get these shadows down here. Remember we've picked out these values already so let's sort of pay attention to them. Get the shadow behind. There's a little this roof I added at the last minute. This window. Got a satellite dish. Need a little bit more of my mix. This one's a little browner I can see but that's fine. I love a little bit of variation when you're moving around. I've not done these uh, doors yet and they're lovely points of colour so let's see what we can do. And then of course this this river, it's got that lovely subtle blue but it's actually really in shade and it's, it's um, also reflecting bits of the wall so let's get that shade colour in. And then let's also introduce some of those warm reds. And now that joins it both to the shadows and it joins it to the the wall. The wall's also got a lot of texture on. So as we just look here, we can just see that maybe if we add in some blobs like so, well it's still slightly wet. We're just gonna reinforce the idea of this living, exciting wall, something which is really worth us having spent a bit of time to add in. And let's now move our attention to those doors and a couple of spots of colour. So I'm going to get a golden red, if that's a thing, but it's only a red in quinacridone. And let's see. Yeah, so that's what I'm after. And even maybe a little bit more red in this one, so that they're similar but different. You can drop a bit of that there bit of that there. And then some of these chimney pots are red, so this one is actually legitimately red. But irrespective of that, I love a red chimney. So bear with me, but we're making the chimney pots red. And I think, you know, you can keep going and going, can't you? Um, but let's just do a couple more little touches. So that's a bit more of my shadow mix here. And let's just make the shadows even darker actually here. Make the shadows believable on the from these chimneys. Let's get even more depth under this roof line just because the depth adds shape. And we've got this um, pipe which will have a shadow. And then even more in here I think as well. And then just a couple of little taps. So a couple of taps there. If it's too much, which this is going to be too much, but that's fine. Let's go overboard. We've got our sponge, right? And we just come in and we dab it away. And that will move it around a bit as well. And let's just spread some of these shadows. So just dab them and move them. And suddenly that texture has emerged on that roof, on that roof, on that house as well. Now one thing that I haven't done, and I, I must confess I didn't do it on purpose, but I haven't brought that um, man, that metalwork, the banister, all the way across. I don't know about you, but I, I don't think this image really needs it to come across. So I'm going to leave it as it is there. 
but we will touch up a little bit of our pen work. So I'm going to use the same 0.2 mil pen I was using before. And I'm just going to re-emphasize key elements of our focal point, our most interesting house. Not the whole thing, or I'm not planning to do the whole thing. He says before, go <laughs> doing the whole thing. But just these, these key lines. And we can even start introducing shapes. So you see where these two different colours, we put a, a light blue shadow and a darker shadow. Well, we can draw around those shadows and suddenly it brings some intrigue and points out the difference. It maybe looks like the frame, maybe it looks like reflections. Let's pop in some door furniture. And now that we've made these doors fascinating, let's just make sure they, they're really existing. And I think, to be honest, that's probably it. Sorry, get my hand out of the way. So that is the, the sketch done. And if I show you the sketch, and then the scene, and then the sketch. Don't know, what do you think? I think it's worked out quite well. So we've talked about the, the challenges you can have with framing, the challenges you can have with getting comfy, and then the limited number of supplies that you need. So everything I've got is just spread out a bit now that I've been filming, but it all just fits into a little bag. And that is my, my sketch completed. So there you go, you can see the, the scene behind me. You can hear the wind probably. Hopefully you can hear some of the birds singing. And that is my my sketch, my version of today's events. You know, it's not neat, but it, it captures what everything about about my little day. Um and I hope you've enjoyed it and perhaps taken some inspiration or maybe even a tip or two from it. If you have enjoyed, please do hit the like and subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've taken on any tips like this or if you want to get outside or if you have any questions about sketching outside. I'd love to answer them. Thanks very much.